night. The New York Jets final cuts are here. 53-man roster is set at least for today. It's the 27th of August, 2024. Thanks for tuning in here to our coverage of the New York Jets. And uh, this is going to be one of many New York Jet videos here on Prime Sports Network that we are going to uh, do our best to follow the team throughout the season, uh, give you our opinions as best that we can, and just get you ready for games. Uh, also analyze the coaching staff, the players, and hopefully what will be finally, Jan Levine, our breakthrough back to the playoffs. It's funny, somebody asked me yesterday what would be a successful season, and Mike, Aaron Rodgers making it to play number five. Um, but I, I think no. we all have, I think we all have relatively high expectations coming into the season given the lineup that they built. I mean, you and I talked about it at the draft, you know, right after the draft, that, you know, both the, the coach and the GM have a little bit with their feet to the fire here, right? They, they need a big year for each of them. They both got a pass last year because of the injury to Rodgers. And from an overall talent perspective, and I'm sure we'll get into the talent that's right now sitting at home, having a holdout, which would improve their, their talent a little bit. But from the overall talent, from the roster as a whole, from what we've seen, it hopefully has the earmarks of what could be a really, really special season. Yeah, the depth chart, uh, as we talked about before this offseason, is definitely better than it was last season. So you have to take that uh, as a positive uh, after what happened last season. So, look, nobody wanted what happened to happen. And, uh, you know, who knows what would have uh, taken place with the depth chart this year if Aaron would have stayed healthy and we would have made a wild card appearance. And we don't speculate like that because it's a waste of time. But what I do know is, is this is a better team on paper. I don't think there's any question. Uh, uh, of course, Aaron is going to take a hit for the first time uh, in uh, in about whatever a couple of weeks, and when he uh, and, and and the first time he'll be taking a hit in almost two years, and that scares you, no question about that. Um, but yeah, uh, you can't uh, predict injuries; nobody can. So all I know is is if this team uh, is relatively healthy and Aaron Rodgers stays healthy for most of the season and is there. Uh, late in the season when we need him the most, uh, I can make the prediction that this team will be in the playoffs. So whether I'm right or wrong, I guess we'll figure that out. But uh, do you agree with me on that? Absolutely. I mean, I don't think there's any question. I mean, I mean, the good part is, and we'll get into the depth chart, right? They have a true number two who's not a number one, but in the weeks that they do need him to fill in, you're not going to go into the game with this pit, this feeling in the pit of your stomach that, well, this most, this most likely will be a loss. I mean, they have a guy who has been in the NFL, has been a starter, who is a talented backup, and it's something that gives you hope that for the games that Rodgers missed, and we all know that he's likely to miss games here and there, they don't necessarily – they have a drop-off, but not so significant of a drop-off that you think you're going in basically um, in a defeatist mode to begin with. All right. Let's go ahead and get this uh, puppy started. So – um, now, I've seen most of the, the players, uh, and I haven't seen a whole lot that's taken place the last couple hours, So, uh, but I'm pretty sure I know everything that's happened here of significance. Um, but see, I didn't know this, though, and that is the fact that uh, there were some spots that opened up that um, at least I did not expect, and that is uh, with Fotu and Yaboa currently on the NFI list. So... Uh, you know, I, I don't have any idea at this point uh, why this is the case, how long this is going to be uh, the deal here for either player uh, and for Travis. Um, and to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure Jordan Travis is injured. I think this is just them f f trying to figure out a way to open up another roster spot because he's coming off an injury. And why don't we just say he's still injured, he's still recovering. And that gives us an extra roster spot. So I'm sure that's pretty much the case. But, yeah, you didn't expect your Boa or Fotu to be on this, did you? No, not at all. I mean, it's, like I said, what this, this does, it gives them some additional flexibility in terms of the roster for now, especially yeah. as we'll get into 
one guy who hopefully will end his holdout and come back. And then it gives them a couple of roster spots of players that we talked a little bit about some of them when we did the post-draft recap. And they had strong camps in terms of making the team based upon their performance this, this summer. And it gave them those roster spots to be able to space in the room for those guys. So I don't think either one of us expected it. Travis is not a major surprise because he was kind of viewed yeah. as a stash candidate anyway. Um, pro- not a practice guy, but a guy that they can kind of just keep out there. And we'll go through the list, but I mean, we'll go through the list in detail. But I really don't think there was anybody looking at this list that you go, ooh, I'm a little surprised that that guy got away. I mean, other teams had players like that, but nobody on this list to me sort of stood out as a guy that I was shocked didn't make this team. All right, so uh, this is in alphabetical order. And yep. as we go down here, uh, looks like uh, Hansen uh, lost the job to Newman. They were probably battling for that spot. So they chose yep. Newman over Hansen. Uh, let's see. Hector, you know, they talk something about Hector and Holmes, actually. You know, and I understand Holmes got up to a pretty good start during camp. But when we're watching the preseason games, and I know the preseason games aren't everything, but still, as you said, reminded um, our viewers who were with us earlier after the draft, we talked very highly of, um, of, of especially two guys, Taylor and McGregor, and that these are guys that could have a shot. They have good camps. And come on, I mean, watching that, th- I know it's the preseason, but watching that third preseason game, I was like, please don't let McGregor go. I know Taylor's made this team. He's already proven that for the, all three of these games. But please don't let McGregor go because the kid's got a boatload of talent. And I hadn't seen anything from Holmes in the preseason games. So that was one that I was really concerned with was whether or not Holmes would make it. Because a lot of people thought Holmes was going to make it and McGregor was not. All right, and they came down to battle now. Obviously, we know with practice squads and waiver claims, we'll see, A, if the, how many of these guys maybe get claimed by somebody else, and B, how many of these guys, if they don't get claimed, the Jets look to pull back because a guy like Holmes could be a guy who end up, ends up on the practice squad. Yeah. Um, Hector could be a guy who makes the practice squad. You know, t- Jalen Key was Mr. Irrelevant um, last year, and he didn't make the team. He was a stretch. Zach Kuntz was a guy we talked a lot about last year. We kind of like the upside, so it's interesting they're only going with two tight ends. He's a guy who, if he makes it through, could be a guy they look to add to the practice squad. And same with oh, Brady Latham. Definitely. Not yeah. that he had a great camp, but that's a guy who you could look at as a guy who, you know, has a shot to earn a roster spot, even though he was nothing great. And you know, you see the, the two prominent on that list is the two quarterbacks, both whom we thought might be fighting for a third quarterback spot. Which would be very interesting. One of the names that was talked about a lot in New York um, is if Mike White somehow became available, would the Jets look to add him as a third quarterback? Uh, let's see. And Oh, by the way, too. You know, our favorite guy, Tan- Tanzel Smart's on that list. He seems to always be on that list and practice squad and added. And on the list and practice squad yeah. and added. It's so like he'll be on the practice squad. Right of passage with him, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I can see Kuntz on the practice squad for sure. And I, I think that Martinez clearly outplayed Peasley. Uh, yep. So he, he'll probably be the practice squad guy. Um, and they got McCutcheon, who uh, just didn't make enough plays uh, as far as I could see. Brandon Smith had the first big preseason game. Um, other than that, uh, let's uh, now that we see the whole list here, let's move over to the, to the depth chart here. Your lads depth chart, and we can see that. See now, Irvin Charles made it, and Brownlee made it again, which is good. But um, uh, Irvin Charles definitely made it only because he uh, he offers them uh, another gunner option. Even though I thought it was possible, as good as Stiggers was looking at, at Gunner, that they could decide to open up a spot uh, if they needed to. Because Charles hasn't shown anything as a receiver, but um, you could use two gunners. This is good. Good to have two gunners on the team, of course. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's probably what they did. Um, we haven't seen anything from Gibson so far. Uh, so really, but then again, we really haven't seen anything from uh, uh, some of these guys. But even in practice, I haven't seen, I just haven't seen Gibson at all. I know he's been banged up a little bit. 
So I wonder if he's going to be really 100% ready to go week one. Well, right now, I mean, as the way things shake out with the trade that was made today and the Jets trading the guy who was potentially going to be their return guy, Brandon Codington, because there was really no roster spot for him as a cornerback, with them with him going to Buffalo, Gibson probably right now is your return guy. So if he's not healthy, then the question becomes, who's your who's going to be returning kicks and punts? Yeah, let's see what they have here on on the Arlad step chart. Well, well, they got see Corley just hasn't shown anything experience wise. He didn't really do do it to college. Uh, Davis does make a little bit of sense, but you're absolutely right. Uh, we'll see uh, what they do there. Um, as far as a, because you got to have two, so you know if uh, if there's no injury and it's Gibson and Davis, okay, we'll, we'll go with that. All right, um, the rest of the unit. So offensive line, no major surprises here at all. So uh, oh. you know, again, it, we thought it was Newman uh, battling for that final spot. He got it, not a big surprise. And there you go. Yeah, like you said, only two tight ends. That's interesting. So um, we'll find out if that, again, is just we're going to stick your bow there, give us a little time. We'll see what we could do. Hopefully we'll get through this for a few weeks uh, unless they've got something else in mind. Because uh, they see if they could it, it, see this is another reason why you would think they probably add Kuntz to the practice squad, because then at any time, if they needed to quickly move someone up at tight end, just for some reason, they'd have somebody there for an emergency for one game or something. So I guess I could see that happening. Uh, other than that, uh, we really don't know if Ab Abedekon is truly the number three guy, even though he belongs there. Because he, um, from what we saw in the preseason, he outplayed Isaiah Davis. And I just wonder whether or not Abedekonda is going to be trade bait. Uh, it's so early in the process. Because uh, I look at teams like the Dallas Cowboys and, and, and other teams and I mean, we have a really good backfield of four guys that are now. Davis is still a rookie, but Allen has already kind of proven himself. But so really, we have three capable running backs. And you look at teams like the Dallas Cowboys; they don't have they don't have a number one. So I just wonder there are going to be teams out there that might give us a call for Abedikanda. Possible. I mean, it's. I think going into the season, Corley is a shot at being a healthy scratch week one. Um, give him more of an opportunity to learn. I think Davis is also probably on that bubble, um, depending on obviously injuries or anything else. Um, but I think those two guys are a little bit at risk, at least for week one. And then you got to figure out what they're going to do with the wide receiver room, right? If Corley gets scratched, then Brownlee, and especially if Gibson is healthy, if Gibson's returning punts, you have to obviously keep him active. We know Williams is coming back from the material injury. He just started really practicing with the team. You got Williams, Lazard, Wilson. You got to figure Gibson's going to be activated, and then Brownlee could Brownlee and could be your fourth. And as you said, Charles is a special teams guy. That might leave Corley initially on the outside looking in. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, could, it could happen. Sure, I mean, I guess it'll be interesting to see if it. Ha if, I mean, it, it could just be between Br Brownlee and Corley, and it will be interesting to see. Um, do they give Corley uh, the opportunity to play and sit Brownlee? We'll see. Uh, by the way, Davis, same boat, because you just, as you said, well, maybe Davis doesn't play, but if Davis doesn't play, then all of a sudden you go back to who's returning kicks and it's just Gibson and he can't be there by himself. So, uh, that's interesting. Okay. So now on defense, um, there's the big name right there. See, I, I've, I've made already, I, mean, I, I, I talked about this, I don't know, probably a few weeks ago and he, he look, he, I, and I, I have not changed my stance one bit, and that is the fact, first of all, let's just get this out of the way, uh, any of these uh, uh, excuses for uh, broadcasters and all they want to do is rip the Jets, and that's just what they do, uh, especially Mike Florio, who thinks he knows uh, more than Joe Douglas of how to be a general manager. And uh, talking about how the Jets, uh, how could they make a trade and not know that this was going to happen. Uh, well, look, this has happened plenty of times in football, and the player never uh, sits out. Okay? He just doesn't. Why? Because then he has no leverage. Because he starts over next year. He, ain't, he doesn't go anywhere. He's still the property of the Jets. It's, not, it's, it's just ridiculous. 
So he will eventually return. Uh, when he returns, who knows? But what's really good, uh, Jan, is that when we take a look at this uh, d- uh, this uh, defensive line, and then you, you mentioned, of course, we've got the three, look at this, the three undrafted defensive linemen in a position group that is extremely competitive for us and also very important. And I just think that's great. It's great. It, it's, uh, I mean, the, 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 and, and then having Tack McKinley. Uh, this is a guy with a first-round pedigree. That sometimes these players need change of sceneries. They need a second or third chance. And maybe Tech McKinley's found a home. And uh, I'm not saying I want Hassan Reddick to report. All I'm saying is, is that so far, Will McDonald, Taylor, uh, McGregor, uh, McKinley, they've all looked pretty good that I'm not so sure. It's like, I like, like in other words, I'm not going to freak out because Hassan Reddick isn't here the first week or two. I'll, I'll get more concerned if it just looks like he's not going to play this year, which, again, it's just something that never happens. As you said, I mean, he has no leverage. The Jets hold his rights if he sits out the year. We go through the same rigmarole again next year, right? And he's definitely not going to sit out two years in a row. I highly doubt given the amount of fines. But Douglas also is in a position where he has to balance what he might want to give or said he might want to give Reddick versus the other guys in the room who are eligible for extensions. I mean, there's several, um, including DJ Reed being one of them, who have played and are eligible for extensions. And you can't just automatically say, well, you know, if a guy holds out, I'm going to basically capitulate and give him whatever he wants because optically it looks bad. And B, the just have to balance it from a cap perspective in terms of where they stand. So there's there's clearly it was we both know what he said she said going on right now reddick has his view as to what was agreed to or told him douglas has his view the truth is clearly somewhere in the middle between maybe what was said and what was interpreted and the expectation that reddick was supposed to show up based upon all the conversations and discussions and clearly reddick doesn't see it that way so and even when he does report he's not going to be the prime hassan reddick the first couple of weeks i mean you can't it's very unlikely that you've missed all the training camp, but as much as in shape you might be, there's a difference between in shape and training on your own versus being kind of in football shape and training with the team. Yeah, especially uh, as a defensive end. I don't. Uh, I don't. I'm not seeing Hassan Reddick halfway at all. Hassan Reddick knew exactly what was going on. Joe Douglas knew exactly what was going on. This is just. This was their idea all along. And this is also what happens when an agent gets into your head and tells you this, that, and the other thing. And Reddick is just playing the game. This is just not a surprise. This is just how it happens. Because if you look at it from Reddick's point of view, you know, he has no idea if Joe Douglas is going to, what kind of general manager Joe Douglas is necessarily, even though there's a track record, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know if Joe Douglas is going to squirm and be so, oh my God, I think I'm going to get fired. Uh, I've got a short leash here. They hired me back for one more year. I've got to do whatever it takes to win this year. So, sure, I'll give you a a new contract. Let's go ahead and do that. He has nothing to lose, hoping that's exactly what Joe Douglas will do. So, if you look at it from his point of view, all right, I'll do it. This way, I miss training camp anyway. And I'll be back, and everything will just be the way it was going to be anyway. So, it's just a game. That's all it is. And uh, it's just that it's New York. The Jets are the Jets. It's just, you know, feeding, you know, steak to the Lions, the media. And that's all it is. And I just think it's being blown way out of proportion. And uh, now, again, it's just a matter of when he comes back. So, um, okay. By the way, if you had, just by from what you've seen in the preseason, of course, if you had a cut order between the three free agents, who would it be? Who, who would probably you wa- keep probably first? first? I would keep first. It's so really you would keep Taylor or McGregor, McGregor first? Taylor. Taylor? I, I think it's really a toss-up between the two of them. Okay. Um, coin flip. But probably Taylor by a hair. I mean, I think I think Watts is clearly the the uh, of the three at the bottom of the pile of the three. Yeah. And then Taylor McGregor, kind of a one A and a one B, depending on your view. Yeah, because the one thing that I saw. Uh, in, in the one game uh, again it's just a play 
but it was that game against uh, Carolina uh, when uh, Dylan Johnson uh, basically bounced right off of Eric Watts at the end zone for that late touchdown. Uh, that wasn't a good look. And uh, obviously it's one play. Uh, but yeah, uh, it just shows you that Watts, just like all of them, they've got work to do. And uh, it's just exciting to see three young uh, defensive linemen. Uh, because Reddick, will he be here next year? Even if he plays all year? Probably not. Because the hope is going to be he's just that, carry, that, that one-year gap guy to get Will McDonald up to speed. So then next year, and also Michael Clemens, and then hopefully they get lucky enough with McGregor or McKinley or Watts, and they'll let Reddick go, let him go somewhere else, and we'll go from there. Because to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure the Jets are going to be able to afford DJ Reed, even if they let Reddick go. So, um, and to tell you the well, truth, my, if I had a bet, opinion, they, if I had a bet, I bet you they don't. I bet you DJ Reed will not be here in 2025. Uh, I, I personally think that's a big mistake, but we'll see where it happens. But because you know what's coming up the year after, yep. three well, first round draft, pick, four first round draft picks, and Brees Hall. So yep. I know. I, I'm you know. I, I mean, know. someone's got to go. You just can't keep them all. All right, uh, linebackers. Not a surprise at all. Sherwood, Barnes, Surratt. I mean, that's predictable. Yep. Uh, now we just and I, and I really like what I've seen out of Barnes this preseason. He definitely seems to be because we know how quick he was, but now it looks like he's even quicker because he's getting it. So it's really nice to see. Absolutely, and and think Sherwood actually had a pretty good preseason as well. I mean, you know, last year we wanted him to take a step forward, and I think he took a step forward. Now the key for him is to continue to build on what we saw last year. And then uh, the ten DBs, very very happy. Uh, to see the way Jarek Bernard Converse has looked so far. Yes, he got banged up a little bit. Hopefully, he'll be available. It's not, from what we hear, though, so far, it's not serious. That's why he's here. If it was, he'd probably be on short term IR or something, even. But that's good to see uh, because, again, if they lose Reed, which I think they're going to, now you have Stiggers and Bernard Converse. Now you got two young guys that hopefully one of them will be able to fill the spot for DJ Reed because, look, there's another guy they're going to have to pay. He's right here. It's Michael Carter. He, his his, his, yep. his contract's coming up too. So he's not going to be as expensive as DJ Reed, but he is going to get a raise. So, yeah, I think this is uh, the deepest, most talented backfield, uh, most talented defensive backfield I think I've ever seen with the Jets. And I think both of us were happy and we liked the thought of what Stiggers could bring. And I think we've both been pretty happy from what we've seen so far this preseason that there's definitely oh, yeah. good, solid raw material yes. be, that, that you can basically build upon. Uh, special teams. So again, a lot's going to depend on what goes on down here. This is going to be very interesting because who knows? I mean, uh, again, it Maybe Abinakonda gets traded, and then that's it. Everything is set. Davis moves up to number three. He's your kick returner along with Gibson each week. I, I just think I, – I honestly think that's what's going to happen. I honestly think Abinakonda is going to get traded somewhere, and the Jets will either get a player or more than likely a draft pick. Uh, what would you take for Abinakonda considering it was a fifth? There's no way I, I'd be happy if they got a sixth. So I, I want a fifth or a fourth from Abinakonda. We're probably not going to get a fourth. But um, as long as we get what we what, what, what we what we paid for, then uh, I mean, what are you gonna do? Uh, what about you? Uh, I'd be happy with a fourth. I would be my okay with it, but I'm not necessarily moving him immediately because, as much as we think Allen and Davis are ready, they're both rookies. Um, at least Abanaconda has been a year in the system, and while he's not been phenomenal, he knows the system, which is a benefit. All right. And then uh, right now, we go down here. We've already seen a couple of those guys that are uh, injured. So, um, and there's, of course, Taylor. We, we found that out uh, recently as well. But yep. what I don't see here, there are six guys here. What I don't see here is a single starter. Um, so far... 
uh, it's gone well. And I don't know how many times we could keep talking. We've said this for the last couple of years, and we're just going to keep saying it until they until they start making the playoffs on a regular basis. And then I, we just don't have to say it anymore other than just like every other team. But the fact is that I'm sorry, but not every team is the same as the Jets when it comes to injuries and the way they've had to – it's just crippled them and – and it's forced them to miss playoffs or compete for the playoffs. And last year, it was just so bad that we talked about how important it was that the most important thing they had to do was restructure that health program in any way, shape, or form. I don't care what it is, what you're doing. Now, I, I thought it was kind of, kind of interesting did, did, when you heard um, uh, Coates talk about it, it, it sounded to me like he was indicating one of the things that they did differently was actually get more physical in practice, was not baby them as much. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, obviously, you can't, like, invent another practice on the schedule a day like the old days. None of those, those that doesn't happen anymore. But what you can do is when you're practicing, you can dictate how guys, how hard the guys hit. And apparently that's one of the things that they've done because I guess their belief is, is that it prepares them better or they're hoping it prepares them better. So when the season starts and the real bullets go flying, they'll have, they'll be more prepared for it. Yeah. I think Roger has made a comment similarly where he talked about the intensity of the practices and probably one of the most intense group of practices that he kind of has experienced in his career, just the type of practices that took place. He didn't really go into specifics, but he just talked about how it was the type of practices that were being run. And clearly the viewpoint was, is they probably figured, look, we're not going to address a lot of starters, especially the later part of preseason. We need to get them prepared for hitting. We need to get them conditioned to hitting. We can do it under somewhat controlled conditions in camp, but still have the type of effect that you want to have based upon getting their bodies conditioned by running practices in a certain way. And look, so far, knock on wood, so good. Clearly, look, we know we're going to have injuries during the season, right? Sure. Like, the question is what type and to whom, right? And you look, what you have on the screen, not offensive line, that left tackle and right tackle are clearly two guys who are materially important to the team this year. And having those guys healthy is huge for them to go to the place where they want to go. Yeah, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, that that offensive line, which, you know, what's really good, because I've been doing a lot of these interviews on, on, uh, on the RLS Football Network, and uh, a ton of them. And so I've, I've really had the opportunity to take a look at the depth charts and talk to the insiders for those teams and, you know, find out, like, what's the weaknesses here and there. And I'm telling you right now, the Jets are in really depth-wise. The Jets have – not many teams can say that they they can they, that they have a first-round draft pick at, on the bench at tackle, a high pick, and – you know, two more guys with experience there that are hopefully ready to take the next step in Warren, Carter Warren and Max Mitchell. So, look, it's not a perfect science. It's not easy. I'm not trying to tell you even that Warren or Mitchell are these starting material guys. And even for Shano, I have no idea if, how ready he is. But the fact is, there are a lot of teams out there that once you get past the starters, especially even at tackle, they don't, they don't feel like they have a whole lot. And so I think the Jets are in pretty good shape, and hopefully we won't have to use that depth. Absolutely. I mean, look, Hashanu has gotten experience at both tackles, left and right. Um, Mitchell had, I think, some bang, was banged up a little bit in camp, but he seems to have come out of it all right. Uh, Tippin hopefully has gotten through his snapping yips, uh, which is really important because he has to nip that in the bud for them to be successful. But... Look, if those two guys at the bookends can stay healthy, and clearly Vera Tuck, unfortunately, hasn't been able to do so, but if he can stay at one position and stay healthy, that that's huge, right? And, and you go as your offensive line goes. We know what the defensive line can be. I think we're both waiting for McDonald to take that next step forward this year, and hopefully he does. And we know about the, the depth on the defensive line, even without Reddick, which will only get better when Reddick's there. But 
they need that offensive line to kind of get them to where they need to be. And there's the Jets sitting at 19 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I think it's actually a little bit low for me. Um, but then again, there are some teams here I think that's pretty low as well. So maybe they're actually pretty good. I don't think they should have the same odds as the Packers. I think the Packers uh, proved uh, last year that they're, it would be a shock if they weren't uh, you know, a Super Bowl contending playoff team this year. Um, see, this is the thing with the Jets. See, th this right here, this is just, come on. I, I mean, I, I have no idea why the Jets are getting a better number than the Dolphins. Um, they, they don't deserve to be getting a better number than the Dolphins. Uh, matter of fact, if I'm making a prediction, uh, and I might as well write right here, let me see what the division numbers are here for the Jets. And uh, let's see, the division numbers. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I'm sorry. But, I mean, we're fans. And I think the Jets should be third. They should be predicted third. And I think that the odds should represent that. They haven't been in the postseason in, like, a teenager's lifetime. Uh, I, I, I understand what they look like on paper. I get it, but I, I just I'm 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 really surprised that they're the favorite. Las Vegas has them as the favorite right now. Yeah, well, it's the hype machine, right? I mean, and I wouldn't necessarily. I mean, the one thing I'll say, yes, it's the hype machine, but it is not a self-induced and perpetuated hype machine. And what I mean by that, that's true. In the past the Jets have been, you know, basically all. We're gonna basically subterfuge you and massage it and and have a lot of smoke and mirrors and make you guys think that we're better than they are. This year, if you notice, is pretty much low key, right? Last year was hard knocks, no hard not hard knocks. Thankfully, this year, last year was a lot of media coverage and a lot of conversation. This year, a lot less chatter in terms of it. Very cognizant that look, we can say all we want, but if we don't do it on the field. All the chatter we're talking about means absolutely nothing. So we're going to keep our mouth shut to a certain extent and try to have our play on the field be what's the proving factor as opposed to all the talk behind the scenes. Uh, do you agree that Shaw, that Sauce Gardner should be the uh, uh, the the lowest number odds uh, to win Defensive Player of the Year? He's sixty to one. So do you think if you were putting money on a Jet right now, he's sixty to one. Quinnen is eighty to one. Uh, let's see what else they've got here. Hassan is a hundred to one. Hundred, yeah. I'd I'd probably have Quinn in. I'd probably have Quinn Quinn in first. Over sauce, personally. Yeah. And 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 uh, my reasoning is, I don't know what yours is. Mine is is because until he proves that he can pick off more passes, and make game changing interceptions and even touchdowns. He's never going to win Defensive Player of the Year, no matter how good he is back there. It's just that's how you win those awards. you got to make the big splash plays. Absolutely. And I think given the defensive line depth, that could allow Williams to, A, maybe not be double teamed as much and B, post more sacks than he has in the past, which, of course, clearly will get the focus on all the highlight packages at night. Brees is 15-1. to 1. He's actually the co sixth choice actually he's the lone sixth choice which i think is pretty cool and i also think that's pretty yeah i agree with that because with aaron Rodgers, because the bottom line is this if the jets have the season that's just supposed to and the majority of the play key players stay healthy with aaron Rodgers there uh Brees is gonna have a monster season a monster season we think we hope so we hope that's 15 to 1 and let's see who else. Garrett's at thirty. I don't think he has a chance at all to uh, be that uh, type of guy. That's probably it in terms of it. Rogers could be like eighty or a hundred to one. Uh, let's see, one hundred to one. Yeah. What do you yeah. think about Wilson's upside? Uh, because. I, I really like him, obviously. I think he's awesome, but I just, I just I need to see more myself. I think he gets a little bit too much credit for stuff I haven't seen yet. In my opinion is upside is Devontae Adams. Okay. So, in other words, like That's a top five upside. caliber wide yeah. receiver, but not Absolutely. number one, not number two, not one of those guys. 
Um, not Cooper Cup. I don't think he's going to get the volume to be that kind of a guy. He could. He's tremendously talented, but I don't think know if he's going to get the volume to be that guy. Look, Adams, when he was in his prime, was a beast with the Packers. I mean, you game plan to stop him. Now, if you have the running back, because Green Bay had the running back also for a while, it's kind of hard to game plan to stop both of them. So it's going to be hopefully choose your poison. All right, so Aaron Rodgers, see, that offensive player of the year thing, they, they don't give it to quarterbacks, which is why Aaron was 100 to 1. But MVP, they all go to quarterbacks. So Aaron is 16 to 1 to be in the MVP, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th. He's 7th favorite, which I think is a little high for Aaron. Yep. He, he's, he's like 58 years old, he hasn't played in two years. Uh, I just, you know, I, I, hey, I'd love it, obviously. Let's go. But, yeah, I can't have him. I, I can't. I'm a little bit surprised that he's uh, ahead of a few other guys. Yeah, I mean, I think all of this will come if the Jets play well, right? I mean, as a just a factor of them playing well, these guys are going to have to have big seasons, and that will end up translating into – possible MVP votes, right? But as a primary focus, to me, this is all kind of background noise. Yeah, you know what it, you know what it, uh, the, uh, uh, having Aaron up there is also, the, the one reason that I would think that it would make sense mainly is because if the Jets win the division and have a really good year, he doesn't have to throw for 4,500 yards, 40 touchdowns, all he has to do is play good football and make the Jets a winner. And if he does that, people are going to shower him with praise and awards. So Absolutely, because as you said, the last time they made the playoffs was so long ago, right? If he's the guy to lead them to the quote unquote first promised land, which is the postseason, just by the virtue of what he's getting, what what kind of performance he has to have. He's going to get votes. And then finally, Coach of the Year. He is eighth on the list at 16 to 1. Robert now if some, Sala. If somebody had told you last December that Robert Sala would be eighth on the list for Coach in the Year, what would you have said? Oh, that he, uh, that he got his, his job back, that he kept his job because... Uh, you would have said they're crazy. Well, again, you would have said they're crazy. Well, the thing is, though, is the reason he's sixteen to one is because it would be crazy for him to get the award because that's how. Because the thing is, is they're going to give these awards out to the coach who does miraculous things, and he would do, be doing a miraculous thing in their minds, which he kind of would in a way. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say Robert Sala would be like the reason. Like if they were handing out awards. And Jets, Jets would be getting certain awards. No, I wouldn't think Robert Sala would be the guy to get the award. It would be Aaron Rodgers, it should be Brees Hall, Joe Douglas. But, you know, coach, uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's, even if the Jets have a really good year, I'm not sure he would earn that, but we'll see. You know, I'm they not go, a basher. They, I'm not one of these guys, they, like I know on WFAN, you have some guys who think he's the worst coach in the NFL. It's just it's ridiculous nonsense. Um they, is he uh, is he on the is is he like because again if he's eighth is he a top ten coach no he's not he, I don't even well, it's think, for a year it's for one year yeah I get that I'm just saying he's not and then I don't even think he's a top sixteen coach going into the year uh, he hasn't proven that not, but he's not the worst coach in the world he's not the worst it's just all that stuff is just so overblown nonsense. Uh, I think that uh, he's done a halfway decent job when the when when games are on the line. It's not like they lose games, and I go, "Oh my God, how could you do that? That is a dumb call. You don't know how to. You're a bad game manager." I don't say that. Now, do they have they won close games before? Yeah, they've won close games over the last several years with him, and they've lost close games. But I don't think that he's necessarily bad. Been a bad X's and O's game day coach. I just think that's overblown because the Jets have been so bad for so long, and his record is bad 
that and he also does not conduct himself still properly even though he's done a much better job this offseason and this training camp speaking to the media that's been his big in my opinion his biggest issue why i think he gets criticized he doesn't he hasn't in the past handled himself very well in front of the media he's too nice no but he's been better um well, they claim he's too nice. We don't know what goes on. No, he's too nice in, to the media in, in his press conferences. Right. He, he just gets him, lets him get away with too much shit. Too nice. I don't know how many times he says, that's a good question. That's a, that's a great question. Fuck them. All right? I don't, don't say that. Anyway, but he's done a much better job with that. So... Um, and that's a good sign because so far everything is going well and we're just gonna you know just we gotta roll with 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 those like you said jan they're gonna they're gonna be injuries bad things are gonna happen the question is how will this team react when some of the injuries happen i'm not talking about aaron Rodgers. i'm not talking about Brees hall and garrett wilson and jermaine johnson and quinn and i'm not talking about that i'm talking about hey so you know this starter got hurt or that starter got hurt okay how are you gonna handle it Hey, you lost to the 49ers by three touchdowns to start this. How are you going to handle it? You know, that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to find out, you know, whether this team has what it takes to be a uh, championship type contender. And as we wrap up, what is your prediction? For the season? Yep. 12 and 5. Okay. And does that mean that they're first place? Sounds like it, because not they're a lot right of teams. I, I I personally think they're better than Buffalo right now because I don't trust Buffalo's wide receiving crew. I think their receiving crew is just horrible right now. Because look, they had to get rid of Diggs. They lost Davis, who wasn't particularly good. I mean, they have a couple of young guys that they're counting on. I just don't think it's particularly deep and particularly great. I think that, I think Allen's going to have to take on even more of a load than he has in the past. So I do think the Jets should be better than them. I. Miami is right there. I think it's going to be the two of them battling for first place in the division. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to – look, I don't think they deserve uh, my prediction of anything uh, over third. But I do I do understand um, that they have the talent to be first. I get where you're coming from. I 100% agree with that. I believe they have the talent that if they are a first place team, if everything goes well, if they don't have serious major injuries to cripple them, sort of like the Kansas City Chiefs, if you have one of those types of years where, like they've had the last few years, where no key guys get hurt, and you just have one of those years, do I think they could be in the? Because look, the Bengals did it a couple of years ago. Teams do this. This is what they do. They come out, they have one good year in the regular season, and it carries over in the postseason. You win some big games in the postseason because you've got a quarterback like a Joe Burrow or an Aaron Rodgers, and you you, you can do that. And yes, I believe the Jets can do that. So, but it, we're bucking tradition. We're bucking a lot of years of not things not going well. And as a prognosticator, handicapper, I can't I can't forget that. And as, as so a handicapper, I got to pick him third. But as a fan. And as somebody that understands this talent that they have, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm all for the ride. I, I think this is going to be awesome. Love it. Uh, just, just give us the chance. That's all we're asking for. Is please just yep. give us the chance, and, uh, and, and, and keep our players, our key players healthy. That's all we're asking for as fans. Most yeah. of us. I mean, Martin, to me. Two keys that we've discussed already. One is the offensive line staying healthy. To me, the second key, and we'll find this out very early, and it's something we've discussed, as good as the defense has been, you and I both know the main criticism of this team has been you're up three late. You're up seven late. Sure. Can you get a key stop? Yeah. That has been the last several seasons, as good as this defense has been, Neither one of us have that overriding confidence that we're up late in the game that they can bring it home. That's where that defensive line creating pressure and creating sacks and creating incompletions is so huge. To me, that's the thing I want to see at least one time early in the season. If that happens, then I go into the playoffs and I think, you know what? We could be up three late in a playoff game and get a stop. 
right? And you're going to go against potentially the gauntlet of really good quarterbacks. You've mentioned some of them. You've mentioned Burrow, Lamar Jackson, right? You got Patrick Mahomes. You potentially have Josh Allen. We don't know how two is late in the game, but you could have two up, right? So there is a handful of really good quarterbacks, as we know, in the AFC that you're going to have to stop yep. to be able to get a win late in the game. That's the piece of the puzzle that I'm not quite sure we've answered yet, and they're going to have to answer at some point in time this season to take that next step forward. Yeah, we don't even know. I mean, maybe Russell Wilson has a bounce back. Uh, look at Herbert. He's got Jim Harbaugh now. Look at We know how talented he is. Look at Deshaun Watson. What if he stays healthy? They've got a really good team. So uh, Trevor Lawrence could have a bounce back. C.J. Stroud. I mean, it, it's, it, there were so many injuries to the quarterback position, not just the Jets, but there were, it was just so bad last year that I just can't imagine it's going to happen again. It's just because it, if that happens a second time and that becomes a trend, this league's in trouble. So I can't imagine that this league is going to deal with that many uh, injuries to key quarterbacks. And that means that there's going to be a lot of good teams out there in the AFC that you be, not only better have a good quarterback, but yeah, like you said, you better have a really good defense. And uh, you better stop them when you're supposed to stop them. So we'll see how that goes. Yep. Um, and by the way, uh, I feel also pretty good that Greg Zerline, uh, it's, uh, it's been a while since we've had a kicker that I think we all feel pretty confident that if the game's on the line and we need a kick that, you know, I, I think we're pretty con- – doesn't guarantee he's going to make it, but I, feel con- I think we all pretty feel pretty confident he will make it. So that's also important. Yeah, hopefully he got the misses he'll have. Hopefully he has the misses that he'll have this season out of his system the last game when he missed two field goals in the last preseason game. Hopefully that's uh, – he's yes. gotten that out of his system now. Preseason, yeah. All right, anyway, uh, all right, so there you go. Uh, we're going to talk. Uh, uh, I know I am going to be talking about the Jets all season long, every week. I'm not sure exactly how often because, I mean, tons of different videos we're doing over at the r Football Network and the r Football YouTube channel here on Prime Sports Network. It's going to be really, really busy, but I'm definitely going to be doing it at least once a week. I'm going to try to hook up with Jan as often as possible, get his input. Uh, try to find out whether or not uh, we'll be able to uh, do post-game shows, uh, things of that nature. Because if we do a show uh, together, it'll definitely be recapping games. The previewing thing, you know, I'll leave that up to our handicapping shows. But for the Jets coverage, anytime I'm going to bring Jan on, it's definitely going to be to recap one of the games. And if we could do post-game shows, we'll try to do that. Whether it's on a Sunday, a Monday, a Tuesday. Because the Jets are going to be having a lot of these uh, uh, primetime games. And I'll tell you right now, the only reason I'm happy about that is because of the fact that I, 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 I this is my business and I've got to, it, it gives me the opportunity to watch and, and not have to worry about like my football team for four hours. I can actually watch other games and do other things on a Sunday while the Jets are playing on a, on a you know, on a, on a Sunday night or a Monday night. So I, th- that, other than that though, if I'm just a fan I don't know if I'm really looking forward to all these primetime games. That's a lot of that's a lot of late nights. Yeah, a lot of late nights. So um, I mean, and week one, the hype machine will be going right because every other bet team will have played. Oh yeah, they're going Monday night. You have the specter of Rodgers coming back. You're going against a Super Bowl contender. You're on the road. Um, all eyes are going to be upon them. So that that's going to be an that's going to be a heck of a test week one. And fingers crossed, speaking of uh, players that did not report, Trent Williams has not reported to San Francisco yet. So And, and neither is Brandon Ayuk, technically. Oh, he's having, Ayuk technically is having a hold in. Yeah. So he has well, reported, he just hasn't played. Yeah. So if, uh, if Reddick stays out, fingers crossed that uh, Trent Williams stays out. I'll take that. I'll take that trade-off, 100%, yep. every day of the week. Week one, yes. Week one, yes. Yep, absolutely. All right, Jan. Appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to talking Jets football for you. And let's uh, let, let's let's talk. Can we for once talk about the Jets at, uh, winning games and uh, you know talking about a playoff game or two? Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be very nice. Yeah, it would be something that we've never be done before. Nice. <laughs> All right. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you next time uh, right here on Prime Sports Network.